Hey guys, Rogers here. I'm going to do a video here about how I like to do shimming uh, for gearboxes. Uh, with this guy right here, the dial indicator. Um, I guess, you know, the first question is why, 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 why go out all the trouble to, you know, measure out the play in the gears and then measure your shims out and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, my best answer is that I'm taking this from another industry. I mean, I, I, I used to build motors, and so I like to take that precision and put it elsewhere. Um, is it necessary? No. I mean, people build boxes by hand all the time, and uh, they're comfortable with it, you know, and they're able to produce great results. So, you know, that's fine for them, but uh, this is the way I like to do it. Um, anyway, so my reasons in particular for why I do it this way are for gear to gear consistency um, you know and peace of mind you know that when you're done the the gearbox is going to be you know exactly the way you want it it's exactly like the last one you did um, each gear is just like the next one they all have the same amount of stress on them the same rotation rotational uh, uh, you know resistance all of that kind of thing right um, and also for development, you know, um, I plan on using this method to make some consistencies in, in testing later on. Um, and I'll probably make videos about that later. Um, anyway, so my own personal notes with uh, integrating these kinds of tools, these precision tools into the process is, I mean, number one, these tools are very precise, right? You know, these two guys right here. Um, these in particular are inches in the or in the imperial system I like to use the imperial system because you can look at typically at much finer movements um, you know a thousandth of an inch is a very 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 small amount of space as opposed to um, say a hundredth of a millimeter but you know do it however you want um, with that said you know these tools here are very very precise right so you need to measure precisely and you also need to make sure that you get tools that aren't crap um, that will uh, that are high quality enough to where they're actually going to measure properly um, these here I picked up at a swap meet I think they're mountain precision products or something like that um, I think this may have been a Harbor Freight by him, but the main thing, uh, I guess the main notes from me would be by inches, by mechanical dial, do not get elect electronic, you know, um, I, I don't like a computer trying to decide how far something apart is. Um, and then also you need to keep the, the parts of them clean, so these calipers can actually find, uh, they can measure dirt right uh, that gets in between these these pinchers right here so you need to make sure that you keep them clean and um, also don't abuse them right don't throw them around because uh, I mean if you can imagine it, if these have to be precise enough to measure one thousandth of an inch in movement and you go throw it around and you break up some of the pieces on the inside to where there's an, a thousandth of an inch play in the measuring system then you've totally wasted your tool right um, so the second is definitely keep eyes on the process. Don't, um, don't think that you can just throw all these guys in there and do all this crazy dial shimming and everything and not really paying attention to what's going on inside the box and then, you know, oh, it's just perfect. I mean, you, you do have to keep eyes on how much clearance there is on, um, you know whether whether you're grabbing into any of the pieces of the box or anything um, like for instance you might have a uh, few sector chip your your sector gear here right uh, you might find that on some gearboxes like a GMP case I had where it has a raised lip near the sector chip um, the sector chip was actually grabbing that lip and slowing the the process down and it made you know it can make you think that your shimming's too tight but in reality it's just that little guy grabbing right um or say depending on how big your spur gear is 
it might grab into your anti-reversal latch right over here, right? Um, let's see. And then the bevel gear. That one is... He's a little monster. Um, especially if you have loose bearing holes. It can really mess with you in your motor to pinion placement. Um, so you really, it's important that you learn to use these guys, right? Use your hands, learn how to feel with them, be gentle, um, especially when you're shimming, and I'll talk about it more with the dial. Uh, when you're taking measurements, you need to learn how to very gently press up and feel the tap when this guy seats up into the case, the other, the other side of the case. Um, you need to you need to be able to pick that out because otherwise sometimes you can actually press hard enough to influence the box in the vise up and get a false reading on the on your dial here so being real gentle being patient all of those things they're really important for getting a quality shim job in um, at least when you're trying to get your specifications really tight uh, which is what this is for. I mean, if you don't mind them being tight or you don't care, then there's no point, or, you know, getting them accurate, then there's no point in doing this, right? Um, so the next thing, uh, I guess, precautionary note that I would give out is you really need to watch uh, your bearing holes here, right? I When I first started using this method... Um, I was shimming a good old bevel here, bevel gear here, um, I was shimming it to what I thought my specification should have been just perfect, and I thought, oh man, you know, I'd get, say, two thousandths, three thousandths of an inch, one thousandth of an inch, you know, whatever, uh, whatever I wanted it to be, but, uh, you know, meshed up with the pinion, but it'd be noisy as all hell, and I'd think, you know, uh, what's going on here, right? So... What was happening, when I found out, was the bearing holes were too loose, right? And so what was happening was, when you'd place this guy in the case, right, it would allow itself to tip around, right? You know, back and forth and wobbly-bobbly. And the problem with that is, when you're measuring in thousandths of an inch with this guy, then that wobble-bobble can end up being, making up, the the specification so say if you have three thousandths of an inch you might get three thousandths of an inch wobble and just the bearing uh fitment or bushing fitment to the case um and so you'll end up placing the motor pinion literally right up into this guy right so you know it'll be smashing up on top of it and it can't move right you know it's all pissed off right you know and that's why you're getting on it screeching uh, so watch your watch your bearing holes, and uh, I'll talk about that more later on. Um, uh, some of you might kind of wonder why I don't. I prefer not to glue them in place. Um, at least with bearings, I kind of want them to find center on their own. I'm I'm okay with a bearing finding uh, actually right. You know, like when you're when you're talking about trying to make that guy agree with this guy right here um i don't want to glue him in place cocked sideways and there's not really a good way to make sure uh that you're not doing that at least so far as i thought up so that's why i leave a little bit of a little bit of playroom so that it can it can find center on its own and it can kind of be happy on its own um so specifications you know the nice thing about doing it this way is you can make your specification whatever you'd like. Um, do whatever floats your boat. If you think that, uh, say, a thousandth of an inch play is just way too tight, I couldn't do that, I'm going to blow bearings up, that's fine, loosen it up. But the nice thing is that you can actually measure it with this, and then you can place that specification on this guy, on this guy, and that guy. And so you know they're all exactly the same by the end of it, which is... Uh, it's really nice, you know, as far as consistency and, um, you know, when you're finally bolting this case back together at the very end, there's no thinking, did I get it right? Is, 
you know, did, it, did, it, uh, did I leave too much room here or there or anything like that? No, I didn't. I know it because, right, because you measured it. Um, so, I mean, I guess this information is already out there, but, you know, I'll just reiterate it. The difference between bushing and ball bearings, right? You know, and say if you have like a solid, a solid bushing, I don't have any out right now or I'd point it out, right? But if you have a solid bushing, you can probably put these measurements a little bit tighter. Um, but I usually like to use those modified ceramic ball bearings because they have so little internal uh, friction that you can kind of put the specification wherever you'd like. Um, and especially in, say, this GNP case, this is actually one of the ones that had a real loose bearing hole, right? It'll kind of make up for some of the clearance there, right? You know, and like, for instance, these, I probably couldn't even show you on camera, and you can only just barely feel the movement with your hands, but there's very little space, but, it, you know, you can get away with it. Um, whereas with a regular steel ball bearing, it might cause a premature bearing failure, but, um, you know, I don't know, you, you can, uh, you can find all that out for yourself, um, anyway, so I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the next part of the video.